What if I told you there was an all-American, naturally aspirated V8 that made 310 foot-pounds of torque, sported a factory forged steel rotating assembly, lightweight aluminum pistons, factory roller lifters, forged camshaft, and came off the assembly line with a high-performance aluminum intake already installed? This forgotten relic begs for boost, gets great fuel economy, and can be found for cheap. Cheaper than a small block Ford, small block Chevy, and LS engines. This is also the engine we're going to be installing in our 1954 International Chassis Swap. Time to pull back the curtain on this rattling, high compression, under square, iron block of a T-Rex of a dinosaur, the 420 cubic inch, 6.9 liter International Diesel. Now, we could spend time talking about the history of International's financial issues. I declare bankruptcy! That led to their merger with Navistar. Different by trade, united by belief, powered by ingenuity, Navistar. Or we could talk about the mid and late 70s North American gas crisis. <laughs> Money's no good anymore. We've decided to use uh, gas as currency. That sent America auto manufacturers into an economic tailspin, both of which are key factors into the development of the 6.9 IDI. But hey, I'm just a fella in a barn who, you know, likes to build hot rods, not a history teacher. So let's focus on the more meaty parts of the topic. Do you know what this means? It means that this damn thing doesn't work at all! The 6.9 IDI is a highly modified iron block diesel based off the International Harvester's MV gas engine line, which included the MV404 and MV446 power plants. The MV404 debuted in 1974, while the MV446 saw its last uses in the early 80s. The 6.9 IDI shares the same stroke as the MV446, but sports an undersized cylinder bore in comparison, turning the 6.9 diesel engine into an undersquare variant within the Harvester MV architecture. I think he's lying. Is that a gram? New car. What do you think? Oh, very nice. Look at that. It's very cool, Bateman, but that's nothing. Look at this. That is really nice. What do you think? Nice. Jesus. <laughs> that is really super. How did a nitwit like you get so tasteful? <laughs> Let's see Paul Allen's card. sweating. As previously stated, the 6.9 IDI comes factory with forged steel crank, forged steel I-beams, aluminum alloy pistons, a forged camshaft, roller style hydraulic lifters, stamped steel rockers, and a 20.7 to 1 compression ratio for the first generation long blocks and a 21.5 to 1 compression ratio for the second generation long blocks. The 6.9 IDI uses 5 7 16 fine thread bolts per cylinder to handle combustion pressures and factory four bolt main caps on the crankshaft for bottom end flex control. The lubrication pathway for the 6.9 IDI from a performance standpoint goes from the cam barons 
through the roller lifters to the rocker arms, then back to the sump. Naturally aspirated complete engine component coverage oiling isn't an issue at higher RPMs like the big block Ford and big block Chevy. So the need for oil and restrictors and high volume pumps isn't necessary. Some neat performance standouts of the 6.9 IDI that haven't been mentioned yet is the direct piston cooling via underskirt oil jets and the fact that all 6.9 long blocks came from factory with oil to water oil coolers. The 6.9 IDIs ran from the years 1983 to 1987 after which they were replaced with the more well-known 7.3 IDIs. That doesn't mean the 6.9 IDI is a bad engine, but it did have its share of issues. What the is this piece of shit? Pre-1985 short blocks have a very thin casting around the block heater element. This actually caused a decent headache for Ford and International Navistar at this point after the merger since the thin casting was prone to crack with the rapid change in temperature from the extreme cold to extreme hot. Post-1985, the block casting was modified to resolve this. I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but I will mention it. The low pressure return line system on these IDIs is quite goofy. <coughs> Guilty! It uses two O-rings per injector, a plastic collar that slides over top of the injectors, and then they are all plumbed in series per bank cylinder one and bank two cylinders. These return line kits had a few different variations to resolve their plastic parts cracking with heat cycles, but the fact of the matter remains, the system will leak, and if it is not currently, it will eventually, regardless of its age. <laughs> but I know better, man. I know better, I know what I'm... Tick-tock, Mr. IDI. Tick-tock. 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 Tick. <laughs> no time to dilly-dally, Mr. IDI. This will cause return line fuel to drain back to tank and then cause a hard start in situation. National 6.9s and 7.3s both suffer from the myth of being extremely cold-blooded engines. When all systems are working properly, your engine will start very quickly at almost any temperature. Now we can't let the old 2022 Tucson show you up, old Ford. We're gonna get you to start no matter what. We got the boost pack on it. I charged these batteries for the last couple hours. Let's try it again. It's still pretty much negative 50 out. Great stuff. Oh yeah, it's heat snowy again. Only using the glow plugs, not plugged in, no ether, no nothing. So let's try it again. There go. That guy going. We're going to cycle the plugs a couple times. Come on, old girl. Don't let the Tucson beat you. All the money. Damn starter. It's alive. Oh, it's not happy. <laughs> not happy at all yes sir the key to having a great start in idi first relies on having a solid glow plug system whether that being a solid state push button or mechanical operation your controller and glow plugs all have to be in working order with none burnt out or with melted tips so this right here is your standard 6.9 IDI. And right over there is your mechanical glow plug control. So this fella, right back here in the center of your screen, is the mechanical glow plug controller. But when I'm talking computerized solid state controller, I'm talking about that guy, right center screen, right there. That fella right there basically replaces your mechanical controller with a solid state controller. Computerized, doesn't seize up, way more efficient. Another thing that's really good for, you know, cold start and IDIs is uh, this. Clutch in, clutch out, 
putting your transmission in neutral, but clutch in, clutch out is really the best thing. You can also press down the pedal right here. Clutch in, clutch out gets rid of all the high viscosity oil that's really cold inside. And pressing the accelerator, you know, if we come down here, where is it here? There it is. Halfway for temperatures above 32 degrees Fahrenheit or fully for temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That basically makes it so then your injection pump, it moves the accelerator down on the bottom and it, and it advances your timing as Case you in point, that little fellow right there in the middle of the screen, when I use this accelerator, you're gonna see that plunger move. That's fully accelerated. That's fully... Repaired. Again, you got to think these engines were the power plant of choice by International for their light and medium duty lineup. So, so they had to be pretty darn stout, you know, pretty reliable from the get-go. We're just dealing with 40-year-old truck issues now when you work on these fellas. You change out some components, you learn how these were supposed to work, you're going to have a lot easier time going down the road. Secondly, your batteries and cables need to be adequate for the job. expect 40 year old battery cables to not have inner corrosion issues between the copper strands or at the lugs. Good batteries are paramount to a good start in IDI. Personally, I've had great success with the Optima Red Top batteries. They provide a sudden discharge rate at 800 cold cranking amps apiece. In my cold climate, two batteries will work best However, one battery will be adequate in most warmer climates. Personally, as for starters, I've tossed the original direct drive unit that turned the engine over at 200 RPM in favor for a gear reduction high torque mini starter. The starter I went with was a DB electrical and it will turn the engine over at 300 RPM. With a naturally aspirated diesel, the higher RPM on startup, the more heat the cylinders will generate. Personally, I also am running a 7.3 IDI injection pump with an extra 2 degrees static advance on the timing. The 7.3 pump outputs slightly higher base pressures to the injectors while the additional timing helps with cold starting. To have a great start in IDI, you need to have an airtight fuel system, a strong injection pump, a flawless glow plug system, good compression, good batteries, good cables, adequate starter RPM, maintenance, and simply not relying on 40-year-old parts will make or break your IDI experience. 6.9 or a 7.3, it doesn't matter. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? Clearly, don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. There have been talks of an IDI legend built in the 90s by Hypermax that made 1,200 horsepower at the crank, which is quite astonishing considering the stock trim of a naturally aspirated power plant only makes about 170 horsepower at 3300 rpm here are the details i could gather on this mystery block supposedly this engine was a stock wet block 7.3 idi sleeved down to a 6.9 idi spec had a 15.1 compression ratio instead of the 21 and a half upper compression ratio they came with ran twin garrett turbochargers with a boost pressure in the manifold of 147 psi ran on normal diesel but through a built p pump instead of the db2 rotary style pump had copious amounts of nitrous spun up to 6000 rpm had a six inch thick main girdle and endured so much block flex that they had to run rubber expansion plugs instead of copper or steel. This engine would not start on its own and needed ridiculous amounts of ether just to get going. 
Plus, it had an idle above 2,000 RPM in order to stay running. This engine in question was originally built for truck sled pulling, but was banned from competition, so the sources say. So it was adapted into drag racing and managed a nine second quarter mile. Not much info is known on the 60 foot or the overall vehicle weight or composition other than it was a tube chassis F100. Here are some photos supposedly of the Hypermax engine. Being that this engine was extremely temperamental and was very hard to deal with, the owner eventually removed it from his drag truck and put it into storage. It is rumored that this engine still exists, sits unused, and was insanely expensive to produce and keep operating. As far as I'm aware, there is no solid record of a dyno sheet or anything like that of this engine. Simply word of mouth. But Hypermax themselves said no, they built We've had great success with our 6.9 IDIs. And you know, I got three of them now. We got this guy. We have this guy. And we got this guy now. So we got three 6.9 IDI. The 6.9 IDI is really a good power plant to invest time into. It's very underrated, but you know what? We've had great success with them. Tons of power, pretty good fuel mileage for a four speed. You can't go wrong. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little bit of learning, a little bit of history, and I'll catch you guys in the next one really, really soon. Hey, see ya.